I told you last week about the ethical conflict surrounding Hunter Biden selling his artwork. The mainstream media is finally reporting on it. Now, can't ignore it. NBC this week airing a report questioning a number of things about the sale of Hunter's art, including the ethical conflicts it might present. Here's a bit of that report. Powerful and impactful work, according to the gallery owner who will sell Hunter Biden's art this fall. Art critics aren't so sure. Well, it's not as bad as I might have thought. Others have been tougher, one calling it hotel art. But the gallery says it values some of the first-time artist's paintings up to a half a million dollars. You could get a work by Matisse or Degas for a similar amount of money. How much of that is the name? Almost all of it, I'd say. The sale triggering criticism of a White House that touts itself as the most ethical administration in history. NBC News on that one for a look at the conflicts and why it took mainstream media so long to even cover it. We'll bring our panelists in today. We're very pleased to have Peter King, former Republican congressman from New York. We also have Andrea Kay, host of the Andrea Kay Show and GOP strategist as well. Mark Williams is joining us, a GOP strategist and former Republican congressional of chief of staff. Good to see all of you here. Uh, and it's very interesting to note to see NBC News uh, pushing on, comparing the artwork to actual renowned artists as De Gaulle. Uh, then obviously going back into the ethical part of it as the Biden name and how big that is. The gallery owners saying Biden's artwork calls it uh, powerful and impactful. And at first, the headlines, though, were glowing. The New York Times saying there's a new artist in town and the name is Biden. And the independent headline read, art experts floored by Biden's painting. They went on to explain they were floored in a good way. But now the question is, is it really worth that much? And if not, why would anyone pay that much? And if they do, well, you wouldn't know who it is. Peter King, a lot thrown at you. Your thoughts. Yeah, listen, I've been in politics a long time, and I'm hesitant to pile on a politician's family. Having said that, this has gone on for so long with Hunter Biden. The fact that there was a whole media blackout in the fall on the very serious issues raised against Hunter Biden and Ukraine. And now to have a person who's never done artwork before, I certainly uh, never sold it, to be talking about selling things for four and five hundred thousand dollars when he's the son of the president. Uh, again, there's all sorts of ethical issues, but there's also just the appearance issue. I mean, to me, the president of the United States should tell Hunter Biden to lay low for a while, to not be doing this. This, uh, no matter how it turns out, puts a cloud over the White House, and that affects all Americans. So I think it's wrong. You shouldn't be doing it. You can't stop him from doing it. But I think it's a terrible ethical mistake, and it's also a. Uh, again, it hurts all Americans to think that. It, president's son is profiting like this off his name. It may be unfair to Hunter Biden, but life can be unfair, and he's gotten a pretty much a free write-up until now anyway. Well, the White House has a response. Uh, at least we've seen them take some questions about it. Jen Psaki explaining the ethics agreement they came up with to prevent any buyer of Hunter's art to expect access to the president. Take a listen to Jen Psaki. After careful consideration, a system has been established that allows for Hunter Biden to work in his profession within reasonable safeguards. Uh, of course, he has the right to pursue an artistic career, just like any child of a president has the right to pursue a career. And yet, uh, Mark Williams, you don't know who's buying the pieces. You don't know how much money they're spending on the artwork as well. For an administration who promised transparency, how transparent is this approach? Uh zero transparency in this. And I think it's a it's a big misstep by the by the president and by the administration. I mean, you're basically outsourcing ethics to a to an art gallery. Um, we're not going to know who buys them. We're not going to know how much it is. And, you know, someone could could purchase a, a piece of art for an exorbitant amount of money and, and, and no one know. And, you know, you know, they say they won't have access to the to the president and, and, and to his dad. But how can we be for certain for that? So, you know, a, a huge miscalculation by by the administration. I think it's something that they, they they'll probably have to walk back here in the, in the next couple of days, given how much, you know, attention that, that that's been given in this. Right. And you, you're seeing the mainstream media actually giving more attention to this than they did with Burisma's story. Uh, Andrew and Kay, your thoughts. I'm sure you have them. <laughs> yeah, my thoughts are this is not just uh, an ethical problem, but if this was the Trump family, uh, this would certainly be a criminal problem for them. There would be a criminal investigation. Look, we saw for four years a weaponized FBI and a DOJ that dug into any aspect in using illegal means, by the way, in order to persecute and prosecute anybody in Trump's orbit. We see that continue with the Southern District of New York, where they found the case cracker, right? She campaigned she was going to take down Trump, and she found that a dude didn't, you know, report a company car's income. Meanwhile, we could 
potentially be having a money laundering scheme in an art gallery with this guy, and we're supposed to buy that there's not going to be access? There's a laptop with all kinds of evidence about a scheme that was run by Biden as vice president getting access, and that there was no investigation done on that, and shame on Bill Barr for blocking it. Uh, Peter King, is there something that GOP leadership could do right now to delay these sales until Hunter Biden's father is out of office? Well, they have the power of the bully pulpit. They should be out there speaking about that, uh, about this, raising this issue, showing you know, the clear moral issue here, the clear ethical issue. And also, to me, even bigger than the Hunter Biden story per se is the fact how the media suddenly is becoming awake. I mean, nothing is happening now. It was uh, much worse last fall, to be honest with you. What was happening with Ukraine to me, which was much more serious than this, and this is serious, and yet the media covered it up. So to me, a real, the real issue is, you know, why is the media even so silent? And, uh, you know, how disgraceful they've been on this. So, and also, I think, listen, uh, MD's right, this would have been so fully investigated by the FBI, by the uh, U.S. attorney, by the uh, New York State attorney general, or, you know, whatever the equivalent is in Washington, D.C. Uh, so this is, again, a, uh, a shameful uh, bias shown by, by the media mm -hmm. and really a uh, ethical uh, blindness shown by the Biden uh, people and Hunter Biden in particular. Yeah, when he was serving on the board of Burisma without that experience in the field of gas and oil, uh, the media might have wanted to ask some questions about that, too. Glad they're asking about the art now. Peter King, Andrea K., Mark Williams, thank you all for your time today. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.